You know what, since my Elden Ring videos are doing pretty decently in terms of views, I guess I'll finally talk about Jim Sterling's shitty Elden Ring video. God help me. What is up, Drama Alert Nation? I'm your host, Killer George Star here, and let's get right into the news. Now, I'm sure if you've watched my previous Elden Ring videos, notably the last two, which were about Harmon Smith and Acerthorn, then you would know that I really don't want to make a video on Jim Sterling. However, because my Elden Ring videos are getting views and I like money, I've decided I'm gonna make one anyway, because... funny. Honestly, I just didn't want to make this, because Jim Sterling's video is so goddamn bad that... I honestly didn't want to subject anyone else to the pain of having to watch this, but... It's as the saying goes, a bad Elden Ring take a day keeps the brain cells away. So the video we're gonna be looking at comes from Jim Sterling, and it's titled Elden Ring and the Tiresome Dance of Get Goodery. In brackets, the Jimquisition. And if you're wondering why I was so scared of making a video on this for fear of what little sanity I have left, don't worry, you'll find out very quickly. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it. You know, I hate to say it, but I think everybody knows what this calls for. I think it's time to whip out my intro again. Elden Ring has been released and with it has come a flurry of discourse, but the only real point in this discussion to be acknowledged is that I'm a better Elden Ring player than you, and I'm going to stake my entire identity on that. I might not be better at playing the game, but I'm better at enjoying the game than you, than all of you, really. Hold on, do you guys hear that? Everybody. Can we listen, can we listen a little bit closer? I'm better than everybody. I'm better than everybody. I'm oh, sorry, it's just Jim everybody. Sterling reminding I'm us that she's than better everybody. than everybody. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think to me it feels a lot more elitist to brag about enjoying a game more than somebody else than it is to brag about being better at that game than somebody else. As well to just talk down to the audience like this, like, I'm better at video games than all of you. Like, shut the fuck up, bro. Uh, 1v1 me as we discuss the themes. Bruh. I think that's all that really needs to be acknowledged, but I get paid to make videos so I can't just go, so I suppose we better talk about video games instead of playing them. You know, if people just played video games instead of talking about them, I don't think you would have an audience, Jim. Mainly because most of the people watching videos about video games would be gamers. Whoa, shocking. I know, big reveal. People watch YouTube videos about things they are interested in. You know, I'm not one for the just shut up and play fucking video games rhetoric. I do, in fact, find it quite tasteless and borderline offensive at times. I'm often told to just shut up and play video games when I dare to talk about industry abuse or examine game industry trends through a mildly political lens or when I talk about social issues on my social media. Have you ever considered that sometimes people just don't want politics and social issues inserted into video game topics? Or in other words, sometimes people just want to play video games. Obviously, a lot of people do care about social issues and industry abuse. I mean, the Activision Blizzard situation wouldn't have been as big of a thing if people didn't care about those things. However, sometimes people would just like to play video games. And one thing a lot of people especially don't like is when people try to use video games to preach their politics. Like, at that point, you can just shut the fuck up and play video games. The just play games attitude prevalent in the online gaming community is intellectually lazy, philosophically cowardly, and typifies aggressively apathetic centrism that one finds embodied by the privileged entitlement of a class of nerd that has never had to think about a real problem in their lifetime. Yes, that's right, all you video game nerds, you're not allowed to have a say here. Because you've never experienced a real struggle in your life, even though you're probably poor. Working a 9-to-5 full-time job 
to support your hobby of playing video games, and probably have very little time where you can actually play video games. But yeah, you don't get to have a say here, because you've never faced real problems. Unlike Jim Sterling, who gets to make YouTube videos as a job, and probably has like 10 times the amount of free time that you do. Look, I'm faulting Jim Sterling for having a successful YouTube channel. I want to make that clear, okay? What I'm saying here is that it's very stupid for Jim Sterling to be preaching about how everybody else is in such a position of privilege, whilst being in a position of privilege greater than the people she's talking about. All that said, if hardcore from software fans could just shut the fuck up and play video games, I think I'd enjoy that very, very much. Okay, that's right, you can't tell Jim Sterling to just shut the fuck up and play video games when she complains about dumb shit in video games and inserts her politics into them. But she can tell you to shut the fuck up and just play video games when you call her out for it. A new From Software game has been unleashed upon the world, and with it has come the same tiresome, dreary, circular discourse that occurs whenever FromSoft offers up its particular blend of challenge, depth, beautiful bleakness, and obfuscating lore. As per the usual, the endless debate over game difficulty and accessibility has reared its all-too-familiar head, and while I usually wade into the fray with embattled diligence to argue that easy modes are perfectly acceptable, optional, and not at all problematic in literally any video game, I'm not gonna argue anymore. You know, I'm pretty sure FromSoft themselves have actually said that they don't want to add easy modes to their game, which, you know, while sure, an easy mode is optional, all that stuff, they don't have to add one if they don't want to. And also a friendly reminder that an easy mode does not mean the game is more accessible. Accessibility is just how available the game is. Like, it has disability support, like a colorblind mode, and it's available on most platforms. That's it. That's what accessibility is. Accessibility is just so you can play the game. It doesn't entitle you to beating the game. The community is on autopilot with this endlessly repetitive debate. There's no hope of a resolution. How about this? Stop asking for a goddamn easy mode. It doesn't matter. They're not going to put one in their games, okay? It's their game, their choice. FromSoft games are notable for their challenge. Why would they throw all of that out? Actual gamer discourse is itself perpetually recycled garbage. The same tiny handful of debates repeating themselves over and over again. Stupid and insignificant controversies surrounding review scores. I mean, at this point, that's just fanboys and everybody else making fun of them for how dumb they are. Like, literally no normal human being gives a shit about review scores. Whether or not a game is too woke for daring to have women and queers in it. I don't really think most people care about that shit. So long as it doesn't interfere with the story in the case of The Last of Us 2. And it's not in your face reminding you every two and a half seconds about how this character is a female or something. Because ultimately making that the main point of their character just detracts from the actual message of diversity. The gatekeeping aversion to accessibility in protest of the mythical casualization of video games. Do I even really need to argue with this part? Like, no shit, video games have become more casual as time has went on. That's just a well-known fact of life. Why? Because casual video games appeal to more people. And, uh, that's it, isn't it? Not really. There are other things that gamers discuss. I mean, I'm really surprised that Jim Sterling, of all people, wouldn't know this, since she literally used to cover some of the most interesting topics in the gaming industry. I just fuck traditional gamer TM discourse. It's just so, so fucking puerile. And I've been doing this job for over 10 years and nothing's been resolved and nothing has changed. Oh no, did Jim's videos not have the impact that she wanted them to have? Cry about it. Why did I respond to Jason Scryer's tweet? Why did I do it? Why do I do these things to myself? That's all my replies have been for days. Well, yeah, no shit. You basically said fuck you to someone trying to give out advice for how to play the game and used your ADHD and memory issues as an excuse. Like, bro, they're trying to help you. We could have all been just simping over this selfie. Eh, that selfie is mid at best. The get good attitude that has vested among Hardcore Souls fans for years is truly contemptuous at this stage. Get good once started as a joke, but it's since been taken far too seriously by people who stake far too much of their self-esteem on whether or not they can fight a pretend dragon without any friends. You know, I think the only people that are taking get good too seriously 
are the people that actually need to get good. Like Jim Sterling. Like, the only people taking get good too seriously are these whiny motherfuckers who just can't shut the fuck up about how Elden Ring should have an easy mode. It's worth noting that nobody's actually impressed if you're brilliant at video games. None of us actually care. In fact, the more you brag about it as if it's worth a damn, the more we think you're fucking pathetic. Who is we? What is this whole we thing? Like, I'm pretty sure nobody cares when others showcase achievements from video games, like beating a boss without taking damage. People just think, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, you're claiming to speak on behalf of a whole lot of people here. Like, who the genuine fuck looks at someone showcasing an achievement in a video game and just says like, oh, what a fucking loser. It's okay to feel accomplished at making your way through a particularly challenging video game, but once you start talking about it as if it makes you better than other people, if you start sneering at those who needed help and bemoaning video games being made more welcoming to newcomers or those with disabilities, you can just go ahead and fuck yourself. You know, as far as things go, from what I've heard, at least in my comments section, the Souls community are apparently actually really welcoming. You know, they actually try and help newcomers to the games at getting better, and offer support. Although we've all seen how Jim reacts to getting help suggestions, since she literally said fuck this when Jason Schreier tried to offer advice. I mean, as far as I know, the Souls community only really make fun of people that hate the games for being difficult. No argument. I could actually provide a litany of reasons why accessibility in a video game is good. Okay, who on earth is saying that accessibility in video games is bad? Accessibility is good. Thing is, is that accessibility and difficulty option, or difficulty select, are not the same goddamn thing. Accessibility only means that you can access the game, and that it provides disability support like colorblind mode. Let me just say this, plain as day, the more accessibility options a video game has, the better. Yeah, but there's a difference between saying, hey, FromSoft, can you add a colorblind mode to this game? I need it to see colors properly. Versus saying, hey, FromSoft, can you add an easy mode to this game? Because I suck at the game and refuse to get better at it. Like, it's never made sense to me that anybody would have a problem with more people enjoying a good game. First of all, more people having a nice time is never bad. Why would you not want other people to have a nice time unless you're a misanthropic shitfucker? Second of all, if you love these games as much as you claim, surely you want more people to enjoy it. Elden Ring has sold over 12 million copies making it the highest selling from software game of all time. I'm pretty sure lots of people are enjoying it. And also sure, you can recommend more people video games, but it doesn't guarantee they'll enjoy it. And it's very subjective to say that a difficulty option will guarantee that. The more successful the game is, the more it reaches people, the more money it'll make, the more content will be made available, the more game you will have to enjoy. Is anyone gonna tell her that this happened already with Elden Ring? And that, you know, they didn't have to add an easy mode to do it? Plus, the more successful a game is, the more people that it reaches, the happier the developers will be. And do they not deserve to be happy after making you happy? You know, I'm pretty sure they are happy. I mean, their game has sold 12 million copies and is being called Game of the Year, despite the fact that we're not even halfway through the year. And they didn't need to add an easy mode to do it. Also not to mention, the developers have said on multiple occasions that they don't want to add an easy mode to the game. I mean, in the end, it's not like anyone's forcing them not to. The only people who would, in fact, have a problem with that are pricks. Gatekeeping. Elitist. Sad little pricks. And those same pricks you're talking about are also the same people buying the game, supporting the developers, and making them happy. Them. Not you whiny motherfuckers who give up on the game in 10 seconds and bitch about how there's no easy mode in the game. And this is why I decided to make no substantive arguments in favour of accessibility today. I mean, it seems more like you chose to do that because you tried to lump in difficulty options with accessibility and realised that there actually is no substantial argument to be made here. If there's one thing Gamergate taught us... Gamergate? That was like eight goddamn years ago. God damn it, Jim. Please do not tell me you are still salty about Gamergate.
with all its gatekeeping, elitism and hatred of minorities, it's that people with no form of enrichment outside of video games can be right dickheads. Really? It was Gamergate that taught you that? I mean, it kind of seems like that goes for anyone who obsesses over anything and has no form of enrichment outside of it. Because for as much as it challenges and punishes a player, it's a series of jolly cooperation, of experiencing hardship together. Wait, so if the game is about experiencing hardship with other people, wouldn't adding an easy mode then detract from this experience because it would remove the hardship element of the game? As, sure you would be with friends, but you wouldn't be experiencing hardship together, it would just be easy. And despite the ability to invade the worlds and ruin the lives of other players, in the face of its overwhelming challenge, the Soulsborne series is ultimately about not being a fucking dick to other people. Then why the fuck did you get angry when Jason Schreier offered advice for how to play the game? I mean, the man was trying to help people, you know, like you said, the game is about. I mean, then again, maybe Jim's angry because everybody cooperatively called her out on her shit. And that, to me, was a very crucial point of that experience. Uh, you might be facing all of these hardships, you might be facing them on your own, but so is everybody else. Shared suffering, it's better than suffering on your own. I certainly know that when I'm going through a rough, traumatic, upsetting time... Traumatic? It's a goddamn video game, Jim. Like, I know Souls games are hard, but I fucking doubt that they're traumatic. I mean, if so, the world has probably got at least 12 million more traumatized people now, so... And that's what I mean when I say that I'm better at video games than you, than all of you. Uh, I am just the best one because I understand uh, video games. Yes, and I'm the best player at the Messenger and Sultan Sanctuary because I enjoy the game more than everybody else. God damn it, that argument is just cringe. <sighs> Why did I even make this video? I mean, seriously, this video is 17 minutes in length. I wish I could have just made something shorter. But anyway, that's the end of today's video. If you did enjoy, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, why not subscribe? Turn on those post notifications so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter, at JordanCSNo, for whatever reason, I don't know. Subscribe to my second channel, JordanCS2. Links to both of those will be in the description. Please don't send any hate over to Jim Sterling, it's really unneeded. And at the start of the year, I set out with the goal of making 30 videos this year. Now we're not even halfway through the year, and I've already made 30 videos. So this is the last video of the year. Just kidding, I'll upload more. I mean, I probably should have set the goal a little bit higher, although I will admit I didn't expect myself to upload this many videos, so... I'll upload another 60 by the end of the year. That's my goal. But that's all for today, so until the next one, just piss off already.